go. Good morning, Mustangs, and a happy Friday. I'm Luke. And I'm Carly with your Friday Focus, a broadcast to showcase what is going on at the high school as well as the Mundelein community. To start off, we have something that has been on Mundelein's waiting list for a while. Our tennis courts. From last year, our tennis teams have not been able to play on the courts we had at our school. The teams have had to play away matches for the majority of their season. But after some reconsideration, the school is completely changing them. Let's take a look at what's being done. Last spring, a rumor had spread through the boys and girls tennis teams about their courts being redone. Because of the courts' poor conditions, the 2015-2016 boys team had no home matches and a threat of possible injury. But after the boys and girls varsity head coach Shelly Majewski talked with the board members and new athletic director Troy Parola, the rumors became a reality. On September 7th, 2016, the courts began their reconstruction. Tennis courts had to go under construction this fall because of the playing surface. Uh, last spring our boys tennis program was unable to play on any home matches because of the playing surface. So when I got hired as the uh, athletic director July 1st, uh, um, I spoke with our business manager Andy Cyril and then also uh, when we hired our buildings and grounds person Kevin Quinn, we walked the courts with our tennis coach and decided that you know this was high on the priority list to get these courts fixed. The girls were informed of the courts being redone on September 6th after their home match against Zion Benton. The boys, however, were not informed of the construction, so were very shocked to see all six of their home courts gone. I expected the tennis courts to be done last year, but it didn't work out. I'm super excited for the tennis courts this year because it's my senior season and I get to play on brand new tennis courts. Because the courts are being done during the girls' season, the JV and varsity teams have temporarily moved their practices to nearby parks such as Community Park and Leo Leathers Park and travel together to schools to play their matches. Uh, the bid proposal had a 45 day time limit on it, so the company that accepted the, uh, the, the construction project and fixing our courts, uh, from the day that they start, they have 45 days to complete it. I want them to be black, white, and red. I wanted them to be like neon green, but I don't think that would work. As you can see, the construction workers have been working hard and fast to get these courts done. Three weeks ago, there was only gravel. Now there's blacktop and a fence runs along the entire courts. The girls might have these courts done by the end of the season, but they'll definitely have them done by the time the boys start. Reporting from the half-completed tennis courts, I'm Stefan Hatchett. Wow, the courts are going to look amazing. I know, I can't wait to play in gym. You want to know what else I can't wait for? What's that? The football game tonight. Same, but they're away at Warren. I know. I'm still going to go, and so should everyone else. Come support the Mustang football team tonight at Warren. Kickoff is at 7.30. But before we get ahead of ourselves, let's take a look at the football team supporting some people who are most important in our lives. Last week, the team had a mother-son dinner to show the moms how much they really mean to them. Let's take a look. Usually when people think of football, they think of tackling toughness and anger. Today I'm at the Mom Center where I'm reporting on a very different kind of football story. In our society right now in particular, there's just a general lack of respect for women, uh, especially among athletes and celebrities. And I, I think there's too many of the wrong uh, examples. And so we use this ceremony to try to teach our young men to honor and respect women. Uh, so tonight we uh, brought our moms in, ate dinner with them, and then after we ate dinner we got a chance to read them a letter that we wrote for them, saying how much we love them and so. stuff. This is my mom. Uh, she's my favorite person in the world. This is my mom, Mama Morton. <laughs> she's the best mom anyone could ever ask for. find myself trying to do things to make her proud. One, another reason we do this ceremony is it's my attempt to do that. Uh, this night's important because it allows us to tell our moms how much we love them because usually we forget or we just don't say it enough and tonight allows us all just to say how much we love them and thank them. I love watching our young men interact with their moms, get out of their comfort zone, and, and once they start talking, they're very articulate. You can tell it's heartfelt, and I just think it's really healthy for men to 
to learn to express those types of feelings and verbalize that. But uh, this night, you know, is definitely special because, you know, all of our moms, you know, they really appreciate it and they do so much for us. You know, we just need to really, you know, show our appreciation for them and just a great way to do that and just show them how much we love them. The mom's night was very great. Uh, I enjoyed it. We had very nice food. Um, we got to say a couple things about our mom and it was nice. <laughs> It was also wonderful to hear all the boys say how special and how wonderful they thought their own moms were. It was a great night. Thank you. The guys really did a nice job. I agree. It was a nice way to spend time with the team and the moms. But speaking of that dinner, it's making me hungry. Well, I have an idea. It's called In-N-Out Barbecue. What's that? It's a new family-ran barbecue place right by Family Fishery in Flowerama. I've never heard of it. Well, you should go and try it. Let's take a look at this new restaurant in town. I'm Sam Slaughter at the western edge of Mundline in the Holly Lake Street Plaza. Even though this location has been known to struggle in the past, Quentin Beal, owner of In-N-Out Barbecue, saw a lot of promise in the area. I think uh, Mundline was an untapped market. I seen potential in uh, the distressed unit initially, but you know now that it's being remodeled. And so far, his decision has really paid off. The people of Mundline seem to be big fans of the new carry-out restaurant. When I come here, I love to get rib tips, dry rub they have the best dry rub in Mundelein. It's fun atmosphere in there it's not very big but they're super friendly so when you're sitting on the benches everybody has a good time. A favorite among high schoolers is their lunch special. We have pulled pork sandwiches with tater tots for five dollars off our students if they bring their student IDs. It's very good it has a good combination of sweet and spicy. The people there were really nice and I especially love their lunch special. We went on Saturday, we got some pulled pork sandwiches. It was the bomb. This is Sam Slaughter reporting from In-N-Out Barbecue. Okay, now I'm really hungry. Same, I may have to go there for lunch. Have you ever been there before? Yeah, I actually have. It's really good and the store owners are really nice people. Hey, speaking of really nice people, I have one awesome person I think everyone should meet. Who is that? I'll introduce you to them in a new segment to Friday Focus. It's called Someone You Should Know. What's that? It's our new segment on people around the school that many people may not know, but should get to know. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's take a look. So my school in Germany wasn't that big like here, so we had about 1,000 students and it's one large school. So that was really different here because the school here is so big, there are so many students and there are so many activities to do. The biggest difference here in food is that you put so much cheese on everything and that was pretty different to the things I'm used to. I had to get used to it, but I like it now. There are so many fast food places. So in Germany, we have mostly only McDonald's and Burger King. And here you have so many different kinds of stuff to try. So in Germany, I'm used to eat a lot of potatoes. And here, I eat more fries than normal potatoes. <laughs> I heard a lot of everything is so big, but I couldn't imagine that it's that big. The streets are bigger, the houses are bigger. For example, when you go to McDonald's in Germany and you order a big size, it's the same size like you order here, the smallest size. But it's an example how big everything here is. I think I will miss the spirit here, the school spirit, because you see so many students in the shirts with mandolin. At the moment I'm in tennis and it was one of the best decisions I made here yet. My favorite class is English. I'm in English 103 with Mr. Bach and he inspires me a lot. It's really, really nice to have so many opportunities in your school, different kind of sports, different kind of clubs, and I'm really jealous that I only can live this for one year. I'm pretty glad that I'm here in this perfect school, I would say, actually, and I like it here very much. Go. It was awesome meeting Lena. I bet. She seems really cool and her perspective is quite interesting. Wait, there's something else that I think is cool. Oh yeah? What's that? The Country Bumpkin Pumpkin Patch. No way, that's for little kids. It's for kids all ages who want to have a good time around Halloween. They have a lot of cool things to do there. Well, let's see what kind of fun things they have. 
Many Mundelein residents have no idea about a gem that we have right around the corner from the high school. The Country Bumpkin is the perfect destination for fall fun. The Country Bumpkin is a special place. Uh, it's a very special place because we're homegrown. Uh, our owner, George White III, is a Mundelein High School graduate, class of 85. He started this in 1983, selling vegetables at the corner of Gilmer 176. So then he bought this property that we sit on here on Gilmer and Polly, and he's built this out of just a field. I think family should come here because it's fun for the whole family. There's games for the kids, and uh, parents can come and uh, hang out and chaperone, talk to other people. We, during the October months, September and October, we try to find something pumpkin or apple to do every weekend. And we really like this place because it's a little bit quiet and quaint and it's good for children of our um, all ages. I love the Country Bumpkin because there's something for every age. The Country Bumpkin is a great place to take younger siblings or kids you're babysitting to help them get into the Halloween spirit in a family-friendly environment. Pumpkin Fest runs from September 24th to October 31st. See you there, Mundelein. I told you it looked fun. I may have to stop by for a pumpkin or two. I told you. Okay, okay, my bad. I didn't know. Well, then you probably didn't hear about the One World Festival we had in Mundelein. <laughs> I definitely don't have an idea of what you're talking about. It's an annual festival full of different cultures that show things such as art, dancing, and just their different festivities. Well then let's take a look at this year's One World Festival. Hi, I'm Robert Zinkler, and I'm here at the One World Festival here at Quackamora Park. The festival is a fun, educational, family event that benefits the acceptance and understanding of Mundelein's variety of numerous countries. We were going to go to a flea market across the street at Santa Maria, and it, well, there was nothing happening, and we saw a bunch of tents over here. And we thought, oh, let's let's see what's going on. We came over because it sounds yeah, interesting, so and because we wanted Spanish to play all the fun games, games and, and we want to help out ages. over here. We also took a look at the booths that represented it, the different cultures by organizations, businesses, and individuals who were attending. Uh, we came to the festival because we know it's a community event where lots of people from the Mundelein community um, come here, and we wanted to take part in it celebrate the culture and community but also help educate the community about what is going on with stand-up in the community regarding the prevention of drugs and alcohol. I came to the festival with my club, Demas Latinos, as you can see behind me. Um, we're doing our annual fundraiser for the Academic Bowl for our club for Demas. They have featured a world showcase of food, art, history, dance, and many more for guests to enjoy. We've got some educational um, and fun um, games here. We have our Wheel of Fun that when you spin it, you get to choose a prize or we can give you some in, you know, interesting fun facts or ask you a question about foreign currency. I'm helping the kids uh, run this craft. It's very fun. I like um, talking to the, to the parents and just being around the kids. Well, that's all we have for today. If we couldn't make it this year, make sure you stop by next year to check it out. I'm Robert Zangler, and I'm signing off. See, aren't you sad you missed out on that? Yeah, I actually am. I didn't even know we had that. Speaking of not knowing things, let's jump to Sydney for Now You Know. Good morning, Mustangs. I'm Sydney with Now You Know. To start off, all chess players, chess enthusiasts, or anyone who'd like to learn how to play chess, Chess Club meets every Thursday after school in A109. Stop by for a game. 
broadcasting team is looking for play-by-play -play announcers. If you ever thought being a sports broadcaster for any sport would be fun, here is your chance. It is never too late to join broadcasting team. See Mr. Meister if you are interested. Also, if you are interested in joining FCA, they meet Tuesday morning at 7 a.m. in room C213. Come join us for fellowship, food, and meaningful relationships. Remember to come to Diversity Club every Thursday in C207 after school for great food and lively discussion. Next week, we'll be discussing Indigenous people and the continued discrimination they face around the world. And on Monday, October 10th, instead of celebrating Columbus Day, remember all of the Indigenous groups who were devastated by the arrival of the Spaniards to their lands. The Variety Show will be held on Thursday, October 13th at 7 p.m. in the auditorium. All donations will go towards buying presents for children at Lori Children's Hospital during the holiday season. Do you like playing video games, card games, or board games? Then come check out Gaming Club. We meet every Tuesday in room C213 from 3.30 to 4.30. Please see Mr. Q in the guidance office with any questions. All students who want to join Students Against Destructive Decisions, the next meeting is Tuesday, October 4th at 7.10 a.m. in room A114. Hope to see you there! Lastly, if you are inter interested in joining the Asian Culture Club or want to know about the club, please see Mrs. Sinclair for details. Well, Mustangs, I'm Sydney with Now You Know, and Now You Know. Back to you guys. Thanks, Sydney. Now you know. For all freshmen that want to have a jump start on studying for finals, there's a cocoa and cram session Tuesday, October 4th, after school in the Media Center. It's a great way for students to have fun, but also get some studying done. To learn more, let's take a look at this video. Cocoa and Cram is an event that Link Crew hosts each year um, during finals time, each term during finals, to be able to provide students with an opportunity to get some of their studying done while having the social aspect of having some snacks with some of their friends. Link Crew, um, we're here to help other freshmen study and eat, eat food. food. Yeah, eat food. Yeah, very nice, very nice. And we're just going to be walking around and helping the freshmen prepare for their finals. We're just going to be asking them if they need any help studying. I'm here to study and enjoy the snacks. I like food and I like to study. Come check out Coco and Cram next Tuesday, October 4th, where you can find friends, food, and fun. See you there. Thanks, Caitlin. I remember my freshman year, Coco and Cram was a great experience. I hope to see all you freshmen there. Well, that's all we have for this week's Friday Focus, and I hope everyone has an awesome weekend. Be safe, and we'll see you at the football game. <laughs>